we're going to talk about user to machine authentication. Now this is a very common uh, thing that you probably all have uh, experienced. So we're going to first talk about what is the problem of user machine authentication, what is it? And then some general approaches and finally we're going to talk about multi-factor authentication which is rather common uh, nowadays thankfully. So the idea is this, so a machine provides some service and the user wants to authenticate to the machine to use the service. So prove that the user is actually allowed to use the uh, service of the machine. Now how can the machine know the user is the right one? Uh, so for example, the machine is the user's computer or the user's smartphone or the uh, smart card on, on the banking card. So for instance, a, a Visa or a MasterCard. Now how can these uh, devices uh, authenticate a user that's trying to use them? Uh, some of them are, are very simple devices, like for instance, a smart card. Now there are several general methods of authentication, of user authentication. And the first one is something you know. So for instance, a password, that's something you know. And the other one is something you have, for instance, uh, a hardware token, which is uh, difficult to, to clone. Uh, since it's a physical thing, it's easy to, to copy a password. If you see it once, uh, you might be able to remember it and then you have copied it. Uh, but that doesn't work for something you have, uh, since it's something physical. And finally, something you are, uh, which is uh, a part of you. So for instance, uh, the, the fingerprint uh, that you have, that's something you are. Uh, so uh, more uh, examples of something you know, for instance, a password, uh, pin swipe pattern or something like that. So that's a password. Uh, it can also be a cryptographic key, which is a somewhat longer password uh, and uh, more difficult uh, to guess than. Something you have that could be, for instance, a physical unclonable function. That's the, the term that's generally used for these. And that's a hardware token. So for instance, it could be a smart card uh, in itself or an embedded cryptographic key uh, embedded into the hardware, which is impossible to get out due to how the hardware is designed. And this brings us to the question, where is actually the border between something you know and something you have? Uh, so do you know or do you have a cryptographic key? Because obviously you, it's hard to, to memorize that one. And uh, from a cryptographic point of view, uh, it's all about something you know, uh, because that's how, how you can verify stuff uh, cryptographically then it's all about knowledge. So there is a diffuse border uh, between these. Now something you are, that's basically biometrics. So for instance, fingerprint, iris, a gait, uh, which is a particular walking style. Uh, it could be handwriting, which concerns both the style of your handwriting as well as pressure points. Uh, at different points when you when you write uh, you you put different amount of pressure at different parts of your writing and that differs between people too. Uh, another biometric that has been proposed uh, the last few years is ear shape because that one is uh, apparently rather unique as well. Now uh, there is something called multi-factor authentication and probably you've heard of the term. And that is simply to combine two or more methods of authentication. So for instance, something you know and uh, something you have or something uh, you are. So 
combine, combine at least two of those. So single factor authentication, that's basically what you're used to from uh, the web, at least in the old days. So you have the username and then you have something you know as uh, the means of authentication. So that is a password. Uh, whereas two factor authentication is uh, more and more commonly provided by uh, services. Uh, you still need to activate them though. It's, it's not, it's opt in and not opt out. Uh, and that's where you have a username for identification and then you have something you know together with something you have. So for instance, uh, a password together with a mobile phone uh, where you have a, uh, either a SIM card to which uh, they can send some code and then you can use that one. Uh, you probably encountered that at some point or you simply have an app which computes a one-time code uh, that you're supposed to use. So in that case, it's uh, one can discuss whether that's uh, something you have uh, since that is a cryptographic key uh, or not. But if it uh, resides only in your mobile phone and that one is not used for anything else, then it's hard to extract this uh, key from, from your mobile phone without having access to the mobile phone. So, it's, so to some extent, uh, we can see it as something you have. And that was everything for this session. Uh, thanks.